Now let's step back a bit. Let's think about other markets, not about crypto. Let's talk about the stock market. Let's talk about the market for cars. Let's talk about the market for art. Very rarely do we actually have individual traders that own the market, that beat the market. Most of the time it's institutions, right? It's say the hedge funds or the investment banks of this world that tend to get most of the gains. Now, why is that? I believe it has something to do with group dynamics. If you've got a lot of people, a lot of brains on a single topic, if you have a lot of people researching all kinds of aspects in the market, then you will know that market better than if you were to do this by yourself. It's very hard to outperform, say, a group of five smart people if you're just alone trying to compete with them, trying to know more than them, right? Because that's in the end how markets are being beaten. You have to know more, you have to be more skilled, you have to have more data. And in the end, of course, there's also a luck component. But the longer you play this, the less important the luck becomes. And all of the above is way more important. So you can simply just gather more information in a group, right? You also might have more resources. If suddenly five to 10 people get on a particular topic, then maybe they can purchase this analytics tool that you wouldn't buy. So there's some kind of economies of scale in here. Now, there are, of course, venture capitalists that invest in crypto. And they also tend to make a lot of money because they get mainly early into the projects, right? They talk with founders and they might get some allocation of the initial project. And then when the ICO happens, they can sell this to the public. That's the standard way how VCs make money. There's also hedge funds and there's also communities, right? All those paid communities, if they are set up properly, then it's not just people that follow the advice of the person that created the group. Then ideally it's set up in a way that people can help each other. So for example, for premium here on Bitcoin strategy, we've got all kinds of channels to help each other. We've got a channel to find new wallets. Right? So there are tutorials on how to find wallets of other influencers and how to find wallets of top traders. Then people work on this, right? They take a lot of time, then share this with the community. And then the community together can decide whether or not to follow that wallet. So in other words, to get notifications whenever, say, an influencer is buying or selling a certain asset. If you do this alone, you might not have the time to find that many wallets. You also might have to look at every single signal by yourself and have to figure out, is this actually a good buying signal or not? If, however, you've got a hundred people on this, right, and they all comment on this particular signal, then you've got a bigger chance of outperforming, right? One person looks at the security scan of the token, another person looks at the tokenomics, another person looks at how often does this influencer actually promote the token after they've bought it, I how often do they talk about this on YouTube? How big is the audience of that YouTuber? How many views does such a video get? How much capital is normally flowing into the asset once he talks about it? Right? All those kinds of things you can obviously do by yourself. But once you've got, say, 20, 30 wallets that you're tracking and you get lots of signals all the time, then you alone with your own brain power will not be sufficient. But when there's a whole group of people that contribute together to a common knowledge base, then this can outperform the single traders. I'd argue that it's the most likely way to outperform single traders. Lots of people that reached the top very quickly did exactly that, right? If you create a company, then you're hiring people in specific areas. If you're a YouTuber, for example, Mr. Beast, right? He had this group of five or six YouTubers that he would always chat with every day where he would analyze other viral videos. So instead of just learning by himself, he basically 5x the learning because everybody at the same time was making videos. Everybody was analyzing and they were sharing all the learnings together. So the learning curve was simply steeper. And that's how you outcompete. That's how you then become part of the top 5%, right? Not individually you, but simply because everybody is working together on a common goal. Here are the videos that work on YouTube. XRP will be $12,000 guaranteed or an AI explosion, top three cryptos to buy in November. A lot of pushing of greed, that's what gets the clicks. What doesn't get the click is a tutorial on how to make back tests, on how to build those sheets that in the end figure out what historically worked well in the past. The back test that I often show here on this channel. I still very much enjoy producing this kind of content though. I also share these kinds of sheets, but I don't do it on YouTube. You also get direct access to me. Feel free to check it out. It's thebitcoinstrategy.com. I have had a lot of chats with people in this community and most people do not have friends that are also interested in crypto. Most of the time, it's only a one-person show. So of course, you join a paid group, but you can also just set up your own group, right? A private group, maybe chat with other people that are also interested, 
maybe open up your own Telegram group, see what members in those free communities tend to add most value and then just invite them all together, right? Have your own five people that all work on this trading process together. You have to try to get as much edge against the market as possible, right? You have to use the best tools. You have to talk with the best people. You have to also invest most time yourself, right? If you only casually trade crypto, then how likely is it really that you're going to be among the top five or 10%? It's very unlikely, right? It's more likely that you would simply maybe have a luck shot at one point, but this is really sustainable. Probably not. I learned this in online poker. Don't think about the outcome of a trade or of a hand. Think about whether or not you played that hand right. So let's say you buy a token because another influencer bought it and then they might have not talked about this on their YouTube. Was there maybe some piece of information that you could have gathered that indicated that the influencer is not going to talk about this, right? Try to improve the approach over time. Try to not just randomly gamble, right? Try to have a real reason why your specific token should be outperforming the rest. If you can't articulate that reason, or if the reason is very weak and it's just a line on a random chart, then probably your market edge is also very weak. And then probably you're not going to make as consistent of a gain that you're hoping for that entire endeavor. If it's your first time here, feel free to subscribe. I publish videos regularly. A like would be very much appreciated as well. It helps the channel grow. And feel free to also check out our free Telegram. Link is down below. See you next time. Cheers.